everyone, if you're new here, my name is Sabrina and I'm an incoming first year medical student from the University of Chicago. Since MCAS opens in just a few days, I wanted to provide some of my primary application tips as well as some examples from my own application that I believe helped make it successful this year. Before I get started though, I do wanna stress that timing is so, so important for medical school applications and you should really be aiming to submit your primary application within the first two weeks or so of June so you can be verified by the AAMC as soon as possible and be within the first batch of applications that get sent to schools to review. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have about timing, just shoot them over to me in the comments below. So the MCAS has four main sections. First, there's biographical information in which you provide very basic information about your demographics, your parents' educational background, your financials, your socioeconomic status. Then there's the coursework and scores section, which includes your MCAT scores, as well as every single course that you've taken at the college level, including the grades that you received for each of those courses. Then there's an activity section where you can describe what you're involved in outside of the classroom. And finally, there's a personal statement where you can talk about your passion for medicine and why you are choosing this career path. So since the biographical information section is pretty straightforward, I'm gonna walk through the other three sections, starting with the coursework and scores section. So as a high level overview, I double majored in international affairs and neuroscience in undergrad, which meant that while I took a lot of very traditional pre-med courses, I also took courses in fields that are not so traditional to the pre-med students, including fields like political science, economics, sociology, and foreign languages. I even studied abroad in Switzerland for a semester, during which I didn't take a single science class. And I also opted to write my senior thesis in my international affairs major as opposed to my neuroscience major. Going into the application cycle, I was a little bit worried about my academic background. I actually had had an advisor in the past who was honestly not so great tell me that I should stop doing so much, that I shouldn't be concentrating in these two very different fields because my narrative seemed confusing to them. So I was worried that the admissions committees would question my commitment to a career in medicine given that I was clearly passionate about other fields as well. But I actually found that my academic background was very, very helpful in the admissions process. It helped me stand out from some of my peers. And I also was not the only person I met with a somewhat unique educational focus on the interview trail. So for those of you that are still in the position to take courses, by all means, complete the pre-med requirements, but you should also feel free to really study what you are interested in and passionate about in college. Don't let your stress over the application interfere with your personal growth and happiness in this very pivotal time in your life. Take that extra creative writing class or add that ceramics minor. I promise the admissions committees will not penalize you. So I know that this might be a little bit annoying, but I'm not going to share my exact GPA and MCAT score here. I talked about this a little bit in my previous video, how to stay sane when applying to medical school, but I do think that pre-meds sometimes get caught up with comparing themselves with other people, and I don't at all want to encourage that. I also think the potential educational benefit of me sharing my MCAT and GPA is pretty slim. One person with a certain MCAT and GPA might get in and have a great cycle, and another person with the same numbers might have a terrible cycle. And there are a lot of other resources out there that can help you determine whether your numbers are competitive for a certain school. Most significantly, the Medical School Admissions Requirements or MSAR report released by the AAMC is great for this. And I think it's a must have resource for anybody who is applying to medical school. But what I will say is that with the exception of a somewhat rocky semester in freshman year, I did well in my coursework and on my MCAT. And I do not believe that my scores held me back during the application cycle. I don't have a ton of tips for this section as a lot of it is set in stone by the time that you're applying. But what I will say is that you should spend some time to select a few courses that you really enjoyed in undergrad and reflect on what you gained from those courses and why you like them so much. While this isn't strictly required for the primary application, it will come in handy for secondary application essays, as well as when you're finally interviewing. I was definitely asked on the interview trail what my favorite classes and least favorite classes were in undergrad, and it helped that I'd already been thinking about these things, you know, way before I started my interview prep. I'm happy to talk at more length about how to prep for interviews and how to write secondary essays in another video, just let me know if that's something you're interested in below. So moving on to the activities section, MCAS gives you 15 slots to discuss the things that you're involved in outside of the classroom. And I personally used all 15, though you definitely do not have to do that to have a successful application. MCAS also gives you the opportunity to choose three activities that you deem your most meaningful or most significant. And you have a little bit more room in the application to discuss why those activities were so meaningful to you. For me, my three most significant activities were serving as the president of my university's political review, conducting Alzheimer's research at the Cleveland Clinic, 
And finally, doing volunteer work at a maternal and children's health clinic near my university. In selecting these three significant experiences, I reflected on which traits I wanted to highlight in my application. Looking at the AAMC's list of core competencies, which I've linked below, might help you identify which traits you would want to highlight within your own application. So for me, I wanted to highlight my leadership and interpersonal skills, and so I wrote about managing a $10,000 budget and working with a staff of 13 students as president of my university's political review. I also wanted to highlight my passion for science and my self-motivated nature, and so I wrote about being the sole research assistant on a very small research team at the Cleveland Clinic. And finally, I wanted to show the admissions committee that I was a civic-minded member of my community, that I cared about inequalities that were in my backyard, and so I wrote about my volunteer work, how I got involved, what drove me to pursue it, and what I found so fulfilling about that work. So in choosing your three most significant activities, I would think about your strengths, which traits you believe will make you a good physician, and which experiences are not just most meaningful to you, but best exemplify and show those traits. In addition to my three most significant experiences, I listed my neuroscience and policy research, uh, research publications that I had done, awards that I had received, some additional volunteering, some shadowing, and also my involvement in my sorority on campus, which was a very, very small part of my undergrad career. It still felt to me like something worth including. Finally, I included my gap year position as well as any paid or unpaid employment I had had in previous summers. So in addition to my advice on how to pick the three most significant experiences, I would also recommend that applicants look at example resumes and resume writing tips that are often released by your university's career advising office. I've included a link to a great resource on resume writing published by Yale's Office of Career Services in the description box below. Ultimately, the activity section should not just be a description of like what organization you were a part of and what your tasks were in each role. It should also include some context as to your level of responsibility, what you gained from that experience, and why it was meaningful to you. You should be using action words like lead, coordinate, calculate, synthesize in your descriptions to add color and detail and to demonstrate that level of responsibility that you held in the role. You should definitely be giving your reviewers some context to highlight your accomplishments. For example, if you were selected to present at a research conference, you should provide some information about how many people applied and how many people were ultimately selected to really demonstrate how great of an accomplishment that presentation was. Finally, moving on to the personal statement, I really believe the personal statement is one of the most important parts of the application and you should be spending a lot of time thinking about it, reviewing it, reflecting, putting together a piece of writing that you are proud of. My personal statement, I wrote about how my father's illness with lung cancer inspired a really early interest in medicine for me, and importantly, how that interest has evolved and changed as I've learned more about myself and more about the field. I really think that my personal statement was a big factor in why my cycle turned out the way that it did. I actually had a few interviewers mention to me on interview day that they really enjoyed reading it, um, which was a really, really nice thing to hear for sure. Not everyone will be like me and have a really profound and significant experience in their life that drove them to pursue medicine and that is completely okay. You can still write a very touching, convincing, and standout personal statement without an experience of that sort. I think that there's this fear about being cliched, about writing something that someone else has written, especially because these admissions folks are reading many, many, many applications. But ultimately, all the applicants want to go into the same field, are answering the same question, are writing about the same topic, and so you will more than likely have some similarities between your personal statement and someone else's personal statement. And what sets a personal statement apart is likely not going to be the themes that are in it, but more likely the way that you describe your experiences and how you draw meaning from them, your thought process. A stand-up personal statement should really speak to your true and genuine passions and convey how your experiences have built and contributed to that passion. My second piece of advice for personal statements would be to have your friends and family, the people who know you the best, read your draft and let you know whether the personal statement feels true to you and is an accurate representation of your strengths and your character. This piece of writing is way too important to not be reviewed by multiple people multiple times, and I'm sure that your friends and family would love to help you in this process. That being said, there will likely come a point where your reviewers might have conflicting opinions about what direction your personal statement should go. And ultimately, you need to make sure that your edits are still ones that feel true to you. Don't let others' voices become louder than your own in this piece of writing that is supposed to reflect who you are. 
I'll mention that I really do think these tips contributed to my success this cycle. I applied to 28 schools, primaries and secondaries, received 11 interview invitations, attended eight of those 11 interviews, and finally was accepted to six schools and waitlisted to one. I mentioned these numbers in part to show you that even for a successful cycle, there's a lot of rejection. I was rejected by 17 schools before the interview stage, so don't be discouraged. This is all part of the process. A lot of my advice boils down to one central idea. The application is a story and the parts should come together and harmonize to tell that story effectively. Each piece of writing needs to be intentional and needs to serve a purpose. And to do that effectively, you need to reflect on what makes you a good physician, why you are really going down this path. Once you have clarity on that front, you'll be able to convey that more clearly to the admissions committee. When someone reads your primary application, they should walk away with a good sense of who you are and how you will contribute to their student body as well as to the field as a whole. Don't waste any of the limited space that you have. Every word counts and make sure that you are making the most of each of them. So that's all the advice that I have. If there are any questions, let me know in the comments below and thanks so much for watching. Best of luck.